Okay, you've decided to finally go electric. Well, you've come to the right video. My name is Raj and this is Tesla Raj, but we talk more than just Tesla. In today's video, we're gonna walk through everything that you need to know to help you pick the right EV for you. Everything you're gonna want to know and consider when you start shopping for an EV. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing to consider is how are you going to use your vehicle? Are you looking for just a vehicle to get around in? Number one, are you using for a vehicle that's more road trip type vehicle that can fit more people in? Number two, or number three, are you somebody that's gonna be using your vehicle as a work vehicle? Are you gonna be towing? Do you need a truck? Are you gonna be hauling? Um, how exactly are you gonna be using your vehicle? Once you list these things out, it will help really consolidate down what are your options um, to consider um, instead of looking at the entire breadth of the land and every EV that's out there. Cause in 2024, there's a lot of EVs to choose from. Now, once you've consolidated down what type of vehicle, sedan, SUV, truck, the next thing you wanna think about is budget. With electric vehicles, it can range in price. Uh, Tesla's been offering some really good vehicles at some really great pricing for EVs, but with a lot of other manufacturers coming in, there's a lot of options. So you wanna understand what is your budget. Now, a budget can't just be what you can afford. Uh, sometimes it's how much you're willing to spend, but it doesn't just stop there. With electric vehicles, there are incentives. There's incentives offered by the federal government. There's incentives offered by your state. There are even incentives offered by your electric company. So it's very important that you explore what these are and understand what your true cost of the vehicle is going to be. Understanding tax and so forth, delivery fees, everything, your bottom, bottom dollar. It's easy to just look at a price online and make an assumption. For example, if you go to Tesla and you configure a vehicle, they show you a price that looks really good. But if you look closely, it says that this is the price after savings. Um, now, they have baked in some of the incentives, which is nice, but they've also baked in a gas savings. So that's not really savings right off the bat for how much you're going to spend for the vehicle. So I always like to change that toggle to actually look at the bottom dollar, the actual cost, how much I'm gonna be paying out of pocket. So understand what that is that you can afford and that will help to narrow down your search even further to the vehicles that are there. Now bucketize this because you may see the vehicles in one bucket, but for a couple grand more that you might be able to stretch. Or if you have a longer timeline to your EV, and you know that if you delay it a couple more months, you can save a couple more thousand to buy that next level vehicle that you're interested in buying, that's something to look at and consider too, but you'll only know after you have understood exactly what your budget is for your new EV. Okay, next, let's talk about range. Now, range is a big thing with electric vehicles and it seems to get more attention with electric vehicles than with gas vehicles. Now there are things to consider when involving range. Number one, we go back to question one, is how exactly are you going to be using this vehicle? If you're commuting around town and you're just using it for local driving, let's say your commute is 20 miles to work and 20 miles back, that's 40 miles a day, your range that you need doesn't need to be enormous. Um, because every day, if you charge at night, you're starting the day off, you can start the day off easily with 150, 200 miles and be good to and from work. But if you're going to be using this vehicle for a lot more than that, if you're gonna be road tripping, then there's two things that are important to consider. Number one, bigger battery, more range, you can go further without having to stop. And number two, what does the charging infrastructure look like that's going to support your vehicle? For example, Tesla has the Tesla supercharging network um, that is available everywhere. It's one of the largest supercharging networks that's extremely reliable. And so if you're road tripping, I never worry about stopping to charge. Now in 2024, a lot of manufacturers are going to be having an adapter 
that will come with the vehicle, allow you to use Tesla's supercharging network. And in 2025, a lot of vehicles are actually going to be natively capable of charging on Tesla's supercharging network. So this is amazing. This is going to improve and make it way, way easier to road trip because let's just be honest, Tesla superchargers are solid, especially when compared to the other charging infrastructures that are out there. So understanding what that range is, how much you need is important, but at the same time, it's not just about getting the biggest battery. You have to also understand your climate because that does also in fact affect the range. When you're using the heater, when you're driving uphill, when you're speeding more than 65 miles per hour, these are all factors that greatly affect your range. For example, in the winter, with you blasting your heater all the time, your range is going to have a significant impact than it will in the summertime. So if you live in a colder climate, you may not be driving a whole lot or need all that extra range, but you're getting it to buffer for the colder climate. This is very important to think about and consider when shopping for your electric vehicle. Now, another factor of budgeting and cost to consider and understand is we all know that the reason that you're looking at an electric vehicle over a gas vehicle is because electricity is cheaper than gas. But I think it's very important to understand just exactly how much cheaper. It's very important to understand how much electricity costs at your house and how much per kilowatt that's gonna cost to charge your vehicle. Really understanding in apples to apples comparison to how much a full tank of gas costs versus how much it's gonna cost you to charge your vehicle overnight is super important. So take the time and make those calculations and you'll know exactly how much you'll be saving every single month or every single year owning an electric vehicle and then can put that in into the total savings of your vehicle when you look at owning that vehicle after several years. That's another really important factor to cost that you'll wanna add in and understand at a later point. Of course, it's not gonna save you anything right up front. It's gonna be later the longer you own your vehicle. Now, along with costs, another reason why I hope that you're looking at an EV is the cost savings to maintenance. I made a really, really good video just talking about the actual maintenance that's in an electric vehicle. I'll put a link to it up here. Um, if you have the time, go and check that out. But it is significantly cheaper to maintain an electric vehicle over a gas car. But it's important that you understand what actually does need to be maintained. While many will say that there's hardly anything, it's important to know that on an electric vehicle, you'll go through tires quicker than a gas vehicle. But on an electric vehicle, you don't have any timing belts, any oil to change, um, any of that stuff. And you probably will never end up changing the brakes due to regenerative braking. This is really, really important to factor in when you're looking at the total cost of owning an electric vehicle. Now, if you are the road tripping type, uh, not only are you looking at your infrastructure, but also understanding just how fast your vehicle can charge. Believe it or not, not all electric vehicles are created equally. Some actually charge faster than others and some don't. It's just the way they're built and the architecture that they're built on. So understanding just what is the capabilities of how fast your electric vehicle or the electric vehicle that you're looking at buying can charge at will help you understand what road tripping will be like when you go to plug into DC fast charging. If you're the type that's just gonna be using it local and plugging it at home, throw this out the window. Doesn't really matter to you. And the last, the last tip that I have on buying your electric vehicle is feel it, touch it understand exactly what you're getting. Recently, I had a friend buy an electric vehicle thinking it'll be just like another electric vehicle he owns. And he was clearly wrong. So make an appointment, go into the shop, sit in the vehicle, take it for a test drive. If acceleration is important to you, test that. If making calls over Bluetooth is important, test that. Take it around turns if that's important to you, how it handles but also feel what it's like being inside. Feel the quality of the material. How do things click, open? Does anything stand out to you that would be a deal breaker? There are some things that you'd be like, I don't really like this, but it's okay. It meets most of my qualifications and doesn't meet maybe the high-end material uh, segment. And that's okay, you're willing to let that slide. But understanding what things you're willing to let slide and what things you're not is very important. And the only way to understand that is butt in seat. So make an appointment, get in there or 
Go talk to a friend that has a vehicle that you're interested in and sit down and try it out. Take it for a test drive, test out everything that you would use it for. If you are parents and you want to feel what it's like for your kids, put some car seats in there. You better believe that when I got my hands on a Model Y when it first came out, the first thing I did was stick two car seats in there because I wanted to see how they would fit. That's important to me with my two kids. So do what's important to you when you get your hands on the vehicle, test out everything. It's not a cheap purchase when you're buying a vehicle and the last thing you wanna do is feel buyer's remorse at the end. Now, some of these things may be super obvious, but for some of you, it may help you in making your purchase and help make sure that you make the right purchase for the right EV that's perfect for you. Don't just go with something because everyone says it's the best. Go with something that works for what you are looking for. Hopefully with everything that I provided today will help you make a more educated decision when you're looking at purchasing your electric vehicle. Let me know down in the comments if I missed anything, what else people can consider or should be thinking about as they're looking. Again, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. What are you doing? Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.